Thank you. And welcome to today's program, One Size Does Not Fit All, a hands-on session with glucose meter systems. Before we get into today's program, let's review the learning objectives. After attending... Today, we're going to meet four patients, and we're going to ask everyone to take notes during the program using the standard SOAP note format. You'll recall that SOAP is the acronym for Subjective, Objective, Assessment, and Plan. And you'll find the SOAP note template in the back of your handout. Because we oftentimes do not have access to detailed patient clinical data, we'll combine the subjective and objective portions of our note. The assessment portion is where we'll note our thoughts on the patient's needs and their wants. And in the plan section, that will contain our recommendation. So let's go ahead and start by meeting the patients. Our first patient is Mrs. Grace Jackson. She's a 69-year-old retired school teacher who was recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes six months ago. She's received minimal education from her physician's office. Hello, Mrs. Jackson. How are you today? Well, Scott, I've had better days. You know, I've just found out that I have diabetes. This is just too much for me to deal with. You know, I, I've got high blood pressure, high cholesterol, arthritis, and circulation problems, not to mention my poor eyesight. And now the doctor says I have to check my blood sugar twice a day, too. Well, it sounds so complicated. I, I just don't know if I'm up for this. Well, everything is going to be okay, Mrs. Jackson. You know, your medication has your blood pressure and your cholesterol under control, and I know you've already taken steps to lower the fat intake in your diet because your daughter was telling me how proud she is of the changes you've made. Well. Let's talk a little bit more about your diabetes. I'm just a little rattled over this new diagnosis. I, I mean, well, it's one thing to take medicine, but having to stick your finger and test your blood. Oh, Ed, will Medicare cover my supplies? I guess I'm a little nervous about it. Do you think you'd be able to help me find a meter that I can figure out how to use? Well, I'll do better than that. How about we find just the right glucose meter for you, and then I'll teach you how to use it, and we'll also look in to see what Medicare covers. How does that oh. sound? Oh. oh, that sounds great, Scott. <laughs> I knew I could count on you to help me understand this. Now, where do we start? Mrs. Jackson, there are three meters that I'm going to suggest for you. The first one is the Breeze. It requires no coating. As you can see, it has a large display and there's no strip handling because there's a disc with 10 test strips in it. The second meter is the contour. This meter requires no calibration, but the strips are a little small. And finally, is the Compact Plus. Now this meter codes itself automatically when you insert the drum. As you can see, it has a large display and the strips come 17 in a drum. As you will also notice, the lancing device is detachable. Let me show you how these work and you can decide which one you like. Finally, Juan Alvarez. He's a 39-year-old migrant worker. He's had type 2 diabetes for two years and he did attend a brief diabetes education class at his local health department two years ago. Buenas tardes. ¿Es usted el farmacéutico? Sí, soy el Dr. Dre. ¿En qué puedo ayudarle? Gracias. Soy Juan Álvarez. Es un placer. Tengo unas cuantas preguntas acerca de las pruebas del azúcar. Hace dos años me dijeron que tenía diabetes. Hace poco me comenzaron a doler los pies y fui a ver al doctor. Ella me dijo que tenía mala circulación y que yo tenía que cuidarme mejor. Yo no he estado haciéndome las pruebas del azúcar, pero por lo que me, dice, me dijo la doctora, parece que voy a tener que hacerlo. Juan. Usted está dando un buen paso. El chequeo de su azúcar es una parte importante del medejo de su diabetes. ¿Has participado en clases para aprender más acerca de su enfermedad? Pues sí, doctor. Fui a una clase de, de un día en la clínica pública por mi casa cuando primero me dijeron que tenía diabetes. Pero como no sé hablar inglés, no puedo entender casi nada de lo que me hablaban. Una cosa que sí recuerdo es que tenía que estar pinchándome el dedo por lo menos dos veces por día. 
pero se me hacía muy difícil. Las lantetas que me dieron no me atravesaba bien la piel y no podía sacarme suficiente sangre. Usted sabe cómo es. Trabajo en una finca y tengo las manos muy cortas. Voy a necesitar un nuevo medidor y me gustaría que las instrucciones estén en español o si por lo menos que tengan recursos en español, las cuales pueda acu acudir. Juan, muchos medidores de azúcar hoy día son más avanzados y permiten tomar sangre de otras partes del cuerpo. Eso suena bueno, pero no tengo mucho dinero y no tengo seguro. Podemos ayudarle. Hay medidores de azúcar que vienen con esta tecnología y que no cuestan mucho dinero. Vamos a enseñarle uno que trae los recursos en español que usted busca. Juan, usted quiere tomar control sobre su diabetes y va a comenzar a chequear su azúcar con un monitor. Muy bien. El monitor marca Active tiene un precio bastante reasonable y le ofrece la oportunidad de tomarse medidas en otras partes del cuerpo, como el antebrazo. También viene con los recursos en español que usted necesita. Gracias, doctor. Ha sido una gran ayuda. De nada. What's unique about this Lancet device is that it uses a drum which contains six Lancets. Let's begin with coding the Aviva. With the meter off, slide the code key into the code key slot. It snaps into place. A new code key comes with each box of test strips, so remind your patients to change the code key each time they open a new box of test strips. Let's look at the meter's Lancet device, multi-clicks. Pull off the cap. Insert a Lancet drum until it clicks into place. Slide the cap on until it stops by aligning the notch on the cap with the notch on the device. Adjust the depth by turning the dial. Press the plunger as far as it will go, like a pen, until it clicks. The release button turns yellow when the device is ready. To obtain a blood sample, put the Lancet device against the side of the finger and press the yellow release button. Now, let's simulate a blood glucose test using our control solution. Put a test strip into the meter in the direction of the arrow. The meter turns on. When the strip and the flashing blood drop appear, touch the substitute blood sample to the tip of the yellow end of the test strip. When you see the hourglass symbol flash, you have enough of your substitute blood sample. The result will appear on the display within five seconds. Then remove the used test strip. After each test, it is recommended that the patient advance to a new lancet by twisting the end of the lancet and device one quarter turn and back. The number of bars will decrease showing that they are on a new lancet. For patients who want to use alternate site testing, remove the blue cap from the Lancet device by pulling it straight off. So with that, let's start talking a little bit about diabetes. You know, diabetes is a major epidemic facing the United States. It's estimated that some 20.8 million people in the United States have diabetes. It's roughly 7% of the population. But the sad fact of the matter is, is if you look at the numbers below that, the numbers below that show that roughly one-third of all individuals that have the disease don't even realize that they have the disease. These folks are undiagnosed, and that's really a problem. Of course, one of the questions that always comes up is, why is this such a growing epidemic? And we can really look at three major drivers that are pushing the rise in our uh, instances of the diabetes. First of all, lifestyle. Uh, as Americans, we are overweight and we see obesity on the rise. Also, we get too little physical activity and we're seeing larger and larger portion sizes, what I call the, the supersizing of America. But that's not all. There's also the aging population. We are a nation who is aging. And as you know, diabetes typically affects individuals later in life, typically in the sixth and seventh decades of life. 
and also ethnic influences. We know, for example, that diabetes does affect certain ethnicities to a higher degree than Caucasian white Americans. And so we are also seeing in our population a shift or a trend to hire and more of these folks migrating into the United States. And so these are the three primary drivers. So how do we go about making the diagnosis of diabetes? Well, we can make it one of three ways. The first way is using the fasting blood glucose level. That's typically after a six to eight hour fast. That number being 126 or higher is diagnostic of diabetes. Another way is through the oral glucose tolerance test. This is where we give individuals a 75 gram glucose load and we come back and look at their glucose levels two hours after that. That number being 200 or higher. Or if we have a random plasma blood glucose level of 200 or higher plus signs and symptoms of diabetes. Now of course, if any one of these occur and can be repeated on a subsequent occasion, then indeed the diagnosis of diabetes can be made. And certainly we know that diabetes has a high cost associated with it. Also, the sample size. We talked a little bit about sample size and, and what sample size is required. I will tell you that many of the meters out there today vary in the amount of blood, and we'll talk about them in the latter half of the portion. Also, the site preferred for obtaining the blood sample. We now have meters that are used for alternate site testing. In other words, we can test somewhere other than the fingertips of the uh, hand, uh, using, for example, the forearm and the palm. And so that may be a, a, a particular benefit that a patient may be looking for. Meter education. We need to make sure before that patient leaves your pharmacy that they understand the procedure for obtaining a blood sample, uh, the techniques that are used for testing various sites, the proper use of the meter, actually how to record the uh, values. Many of our patients don't simply know how to put a record value into a logbook. That needs to be demonstrated to that patient. And certainly the frequency of testing. How many tests am I going to do per day? What times of the day am I going to do them? All need to be discussed before the patient leaves. Also, obtaining a sample. Patients need to understand how to go about obtaining the sample. And so one of the things we try to recommend to our patients is to avoid the soft center parts of the fingertips. And one of the tips that I use in my particular clinic is I ask my patients to put their hands together like they're praying. Because if you do that, the areas that you can see are the areas where you can prick. And notice that's the outer perimeters of the finger. We're not hitting the soft center parts of the finger. And the reason that is is because that's where the deepest, most dense nerve endings are. And so repeated uh, puncture at those particular sites actually will lead to increased pain. Also, to reduce the pain, as I said before, we must tell our patients to change the lancet each and every time. To help increase blood flow and to help get a sample, we actually ask our patients to use warm water to clean the hands. I try to discourage uh, the use of alcohol because alcohol can dry the skin and oftentimes uh, uh, the alcohol, if it's left on the skin, can dilute a sample and lead to an erroneous reading. So just have them wash it with warm soapy water. Actually getting the drop of blood, the technique is gently massaging the hand uh, before the actual puncture is to take place. You can actually have a patient hold their arm down to the side uh, that helps, again, accumulate blood in the lower extremities. And then also sort of uh, uh, running your hand down the arm to help increase blood flow. All of that will help to increase the sample size. Making sure your patients rotate the testing sites is extremely important. We want to use all the fingers, and we want to use all the fingers of both hands. That allows the fingers to rest. And as we go through each finger, we want to move around the outer perimeters of each finger. Gently, uh, as we get the drop of blood, gently squeezing the fingertip to get a drop of blood. Not a heavy uh, uh, hand-holded pressure, but just a gentle squeeze. Also, for our patients that uh, have calluses or perhaps may be uh, working with their hands, we recommend that these folks use hand lotion to keep the skin soft and supple. A lot of questions come about alternate site testing. Now remember, this is where we use some other site other than the fingertips. People ask, well, when can you use alternate site testing and when can't you? And I've created a general rule. Anytime the blood glucose levels are changing rapidly or anytime you're in an emergency situation or you're concerned about hypoglycemia, these are all times when alternate site testing should not be performed. So let's take a look and see when are blood glucose levels changing most rapidly. 
Well, certainly after a meal. We know that as we uh, eat, blood glucose levels tend to go up. So immediately following a meal, this would not be a good time to perform alternate site testing. However, two hours after the meal has ended, that would be fine. We could do it then. Immediately after exercise. Again, as we exercise, blood glucose levels usually tend to drop. And so, again, right after exercise would not be a good time to do alternate site testing. However, if you wait two hours, it may be appropriate. During an illness, emergency situation, when the patient is feeling hypoglycemic or if they're going too low, again, emergency situation, also those patients with hypoglycemic unawareness. Now, this is a condition caused by autonomic neuropathy, where these patients have this autonomic neuropathy, they have hypoglycemic unawareness, and they never feel the signs and symptoms of hypoglycemia coming on. For example, they never feel the rapid heart rate or the sweating that occurs. These folks are upright one minute, and the next minute they're completely passed out. So certainly we want to make sure that these folks are uh, performing finger sticks. Also after injecting rapid acting insulin, and any time you're concerned about driving an automobile. These are all times when alternate site testing should not be performed, and we should be using finger sticks. Throughout the rest of this program, we're going to see many meters that offer alternate site testing. And so I want you to pay attention to those particular meters so that you're able to offer them for your patients.